Good evening, Stetson. I'm Allison Tangersley. And I'm Daniela Hankey. Thank you for joining us for our first ever WHNN News Hour at 4. We begin on a somber note as we announce the passing of actress Mary Tyler Moore. She was best known for her roles in the Mary Tyler Moore Show and the movie Ordinary People. In local news, the Deland Meestrong 5K took place this past Saturday with a fantastic turnout. Runners and walkers of all ages participated to show their support for Central Floridians battling cancer and to help promote healthy living. Looking ahead in the Deland calendar of events, Volusia Beer Week is almost here. Beer enthusiasts can enjoy a week of festivities beginning on February 3rd and concluding on February 12th with the Deland Craft Beer Festival right here in downtown Deland. In campus news, John B. Well Week begins tomorrow. Be sure to check out the Stetson calendar of events at stetson.edu slash program slash calendars for details on the event and more. Now it's time to check in with Chief Weather Forecaster Rihanna Boyer. Rihanna, what's going on this week? Good evening, Stetson. Rhiannon Boyer here with your weather. As many of you are unaware, the power was out for about five hours this morning due to extensive rain. One of the PSAFE officers had informed me when it rains like this, the power will almost always go out. Now for the rest of the day, we're going to see more rain and partly cloudy with some showers, but um, into the evening, it's going to chill down quite a bit and we're looking at a high for 67 tomorrow and a low for 43 tonight. So make sure we wear our jackets and stay cozy. Back to you, Allison. Thank you, Rhiannon. News out of Orlando, Markeith Lloyd has officially been charged with two counts of first-degree murder with a firearm, two counts of aggravated assault with a firearm, and one count of attempted murder, along with resisting arrests. That includes the murders of Lloyd's pregnant girlfriend and Master Sergeant Deborah Clayton of the Orlando Police Department. Over six months have passed since the horrific shooting massacre at Pulse nightclub. WHNN's Samantha Zurich is live outside of Pulse with an exclusive update. Samantha, what can you tell us about this? Daniela, in the months following the devastating events that took place here at Pulse Nightclub, we have seen the Orlando community come together to support and remember all of the victims and those affected by the horrible massacre. Shock and disbelief. Shock, absolutely. Absolutely. Heartbreak. These are the words that come to mind when Janine and Wally Goodnow recall their reaction when they heard about the tragic shooting on the news and through their son, who was not at the nightclub himself, but who lost a close friend, Edward Top Hat Eddie Sotomayor. Since then, they have done their part to ease the pain felt in the hearts of so many by contributing largely to the memorial. Well, we started with this Top Hat uh, for Eddie. He's a friend of my son's, or our son's. Uh, his name was Top Hat Eddie, so that was built for him. I took a walk along the memorial fence line as the Good Nose showed me the pieces that they created, in their own words, out of love and support for the victims. Flowers, messages, paintings, and an outpouring of love continue to surround Pulse Nightclub over six months after the shooting. The newest addition by the Good Nose, this memorial with the names and photos of all 49 victims. Months after the attack, emotions still run high for visitors like Nancy Dolniak. There's so many young people who like to enjoy being out, having fun, and they don't expect to have their life end that night. It's just, it's just totally wrong. Visitors like Michael Wright and John Pohl are still devastated by the loss of innocent lives, but they are also recognizing positive moves forward. People came together. I mean, I think it caused more good in the long run so their names aren't forgotten. I mean, look, this is beautiful. In the words of Edward Top Hat Eddie Sotomayor, Do as much good as you can to as many people as you can, as often as you can, Eddie Sotomayor. And that's what we've tried to do here in honor of him. In his memory, he must be here. I feel a little goosebumps. As the community continues to maintain the beautiful memorials created by local citizens, it also continues to strengthen, unify, and move forward together while never forgetting the lives lost and affected. Reporting in downtown Orlando, Samantha Zarek, WHNN News, When It Happens. I'll send it back over to you, Danielle and Allison, in the studio. Thank you, Samantha. We'll turn now to Rhiannon with weather. 
Thanks, Daniela. Again, as you can see here, it's pretty cloudy and rainy, but as we progress into the week, we can see beautiful sunshine and beautiful temperatures. For these next few days, though, we're looking at temperatures in the lower 70s and upper 60s. Tomorrow night, we're actually going to reach a low of 38, so make sure you have your blankets ready and your heaters on, if that makes you cold. But other than that, I, like I said, once we progress into the week, we're going to see highs in the upper 70s, lows in the 50s, and we shouldn't see cloud or rain until next weekend. Tune in to WHNN for more weather updates. Back to you guys in the studio. Thank you, Rhiannon. Be sure to check out upcoming culture credit opportunities. The Can I Kiss You event is among those happening this week. It will focus on violence, prevention, consent, bystander intervention, and alcohol. It's hosted by the Psychology Department and Wellness and Recreation, and it will take place Wednesday from 7 to 11 p.m. at the Hollis Center Rinker Field House. Also, if you're looking for an internship, part three of the internship series will be taking place on February 3rd in LBC 122 from 3 to 4 p.m. And of course, the Career and Professional Development Center is always available for further questions, inquiries, and career guidance. We'll now toss it over to DJ Swordoff with sports. Thanks, Allison. It's been a busy week in Stetson sports. Last Saturday, both the men's and women's basketball teams were in action against conference rival USC Upstate. The women's game with a record of 14-5 and 3-1 and and in conference play, they took the first game of the day by a score of 80-68, to 68, led by freshman Brianti Saunders with 23 points, 6 assists, and 7 rebounds. Four players scored in double digits. Brianna Bay had 15 points, DeAsia Beal with 12, and Sarah Segura with 10. Stetson moved up to 13-1 and one when leading after three quarters. The men's game, with a record of 8-13 and 1-4 and and in conference play in the second game of the afternoon, lost by a close one of 97-86. Derek Newton with his third career 30-point performance and second of the season. Devon Miles finished with 18 points and 9 rebounds. They had, 40, they had a 47-46 to 46 halftime lead, but they ended up losing the game. Last Monday night, the women's game against NGIT resulted in a blowout win with a final score of 77-43, to 43, making this their fourth win in a row. They are currently tied for their third best 20-game start in Stetson history at 15-5. After a 28-point run, this turned an 8-4 lead into a 36-4 lead. Three players scored in double digits. That's Brittany Chambers with 19 points, Brianna Bay with 14, and Sarah Sager with 12. The men's Wednesday night game ended in a 103-92 loss against JU. This despite four players scoring in double digits. Derek Newton led all scorers with 31 points, his second consecutive 30-point effort and his third of the season. That's all for sports. Thanks, DJ, for the sports. Hey, DJ. Who do you think is going to win the Super Bowl? I have to go with the Falcons. Really? Yeah. Ooh. I don't know. I've heard differently. I know they predicted the Patriots are going to win. How did they predict that? Is it like the Groundhog for Groundhog's Day? <laughs> I think I so. Think so. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Rhiannon Boyer. Daniela Hankey. Allison Tankersley. DJ Swordloff. We're here for WHNN When It Happens.